Violent convicts are reaching out from behind prison walls and terrorizing local families at startling numbers. And days after federal prosecutors announced prison sentences for convicts using cell phones to arrange drug deals, our Call 6 investigators are going deep inside a maximum security lockup to report on a new threat from behind bars that affects us all. Investigative reporter Stephen Dean is here with a story you will see only on RTV6. Stephen. Well, cell phones are a growing danger behind bars, not just for drug deals, but now for harassment, stalking, and real violence. Prison bosses tell me one inmate was able to use a cell phone to arrange a hit from inside his cell. A fellow prisoner was killed, and an Indianapolis family is afraid they could be next. <laughs> These specially trained dogs are deployed every day inside Indiana prisons, and they're sniffing only for cell phones tucked inside inmates' cells. But the phones they're not finding are being used by convicts to terrorize a growing number of families on the outside. I just feel like we're all prisoners. Uh, rather than him being a prisoner, I feel like our whole family is imprisoned. She's so afraid she asked us to disguise her family's identity. Her teenage daughter has been getting hundreds of calls and texts from a state prisoner the girl used to date. The family's phone bill shows constant calling after 3 and 5 in the morning, and both the girl's parents say that convict then threatened to kill them and burn their house down with the help from other people that he can phone on the outside. It's just like we're being beat up on is what it feels like, and we feel like we can't get any protection from that. It's disturbing, and it worries me to death. Even more of a worry, he says, because he alerted prison staff and the convict who's harassing his family was then caught with a phone in his cell. I'm more or less in fear for my life. Only hours after being caught with a phone, the convict got his hands on another smuggled cell phone, and the calls got worse. He seemed angry that the family turned him in. And I'm sick of it. I wish the justice system would do something about it. It's like they're putting it on the back burner, just giving them a slap on the wrist, saying, don't do this again, don't do this again. But Indiana Department of Correction leaders say they acted fast because they know that guards and the rest of us are in danger when convicts get a hold of cell phones. It's a big deal. We recognize that it is that, so we're not turning our head or keeping our head in the sand about it. Department of Corrections' Doug Garrison says more than 900 phones have been seized inside prisons so far this year. There were 2,500 found in state prisons each year in 2011 and 2012. We feel in the Department of Correction not defensive at all about the fact that, yes, phones are still making it in, but we're taking immense efforts to try to stop it. But now prison bosses tell the Call 6 investigators they're getting a new complaint every week or two about inmates using those phones to harass people on the outside, even posting on Facebook and other social media. That's a growing concern at the Julian Center where they counsel victims of domestic violence and rape. Crime victims are now being warned that abusers may be calling or Facebooking from prison. That is, of course, something that, you know, our survivors don't want to have. They don't want to be re-victimized. Prison leaders tell us they're stepping up searches of trucks and some of the phones are coming in with supplies and others come in like this, hidden inside a visitor's body wrapped in tape. A smartphone that can log onto the internet and Facebook can sell for $3,900 in prison. Prison search teams tell us they're constantly surprised by where these dogs are finding phones inside TVs and other electronics or squished down into peanut butter jars. A lot of times it in with food. Uh, in with food is one of the more popular places. Prison officials say 27-year-old convicted robber Zach Whitty was behind the harassment. He's been transferred and he lost prison privileges for it when this Indianapolis family complained on him and he was caught with a phone. The calls may have stopped for now, but with smugglers bringing so many phones into prison, this family's afraid the phone will start ringing again any minute. They're affecting real families. It's hurting people.
Now, to show you how big this problem is, while we were inside the prison in Pendleton, the warden told us they had just lost track of as many as 10 cell phones that were smuggled in on a supply truck. He said he never considered locking down the whole prison to search for them. The prison system says it's proud of its efforts to keep the cell phones out, but what they're hoping is someday the feds will allow them to jam the cell signals from inside the prison. They say that's the only way you're going to stop this harassment completely. I'm guessing there's a reason, but why wouldn't the feds allow them to jam it now? Well, the cellular industry is fighting it vigorously. They do not want any kind of uh, regulation that allows cell phone jamming, but I've seen this technology actually demonstrated. It's very precise. It can go right within certain areas of the prison, but the cell phone industry is saying that uh, guards might be affected in emergency calls and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. so the FCC won't allow it in any prison in the country for now. You just feel so bad for those victims who are just continuing to live through a nightmare. And this many complaints, I mean, a couple every month, that's, uh, that's a big deal. That's why we're going to keep an eye on it.